spring has sprung, it's a heartwarming sight. The harsh winter fades away and nature awakens from its slumber. The beauty that comes with warmer weather is incredibly heartwarming to witness. Each season has its own unique charm and I adore them all, but there's something to spring that makes it almost magical. I'm a big fan of plant life, yeah, and birds, all animals actually. In their own ways, they all add to the charm and magnetism of nature. Speaking of plant life, a lot of spring flowers are toxic, but they can be deadly as well as medicinal depending on how they're used. But spring also provides us with a host of powerful healing herbs, and some of them I've already talked about in detail in previous videos. And not to get too motivational, spring is a reminder that even after dark times, there will always be light at the end of the tunnel. Remember that whenever life throws you a curveball again. So thank you for joining me in this opportunity to appreciate nature's ability to provide us with endless sources of beauty that never cease, no matter what time of year it is. Ultimately, spring serves as a reminder that life is constantly changing. But if we take some time out every now and then and just be present within these fleeting moments, we will find ourselves feeling refreshed and energized by Mother Nature's magical touch. Let's take a look around, see what Mother Nature hooked us up with so far. And right beside this tree, we already have some springtime herbs that we can talk about. This is wood sorrel. It looks like shamrock. It has these clover shaped leaves. That's an easy identifier. Oh, not a very good flower. This one's better. That's what the flowers look like. They're white with these veins inside. Usually five petals. Wood sorrel is considered edible, but it's high in oxalic acid and that's why I don't consume it. Oxalic acid is basically an anti-nutrient. It binds to minerals, so it deprives your body of minerals that it needs. And as it binds to them, it forms crystals which then tear you apart from the inside. That's how I got kidney stones. And for that reason I don't really recommend consuming wood sorrel or anything high in oxalic acid. But it is still considered edible and it could be an emergency survival food if one needs it. Right beside it, that's stinging nettles. There is such a powerful medicinal herb that this video wouldn't do it justice. I'm gonna have to do a separate video on it, but that is just phenomenal herb. And moving on, we've got longwort here. I made a video about lungwort, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but it's a powerful medicinal herb, grows in early spring and basically gives your body what it needs after being beat down by winter. Great herb to collect, great herb to make tea from, great herb to know, lungwort. These are ferns. They unroll like this, they're not edible interesting plants they're gonna grow much 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 bigger much bigger this is just the beginning of them ferns that's what they look like they literally unroll from the ground just go pru, 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 into this really really tall plant oh look, there's a bumblebee Ooh, took off more ferns here They grow in clusters like that. So if I turn around, what do I see here? Less of calendine. See the yellow flower? Not really open, so it doesn't look very pretty. The leaves look like these, the kidney-shaped stuff. These have dots on them for some reason. Apparently has some medicinal properties in low doses and has been studied, but generally considered toxic 
I would not recommend. I do not harvest, I do not use. Also toxic for livestock, but quickly disappears after spring before grasses grow, so livestock don't really eat them. And <laughs> this is already getting glued to my skin. That's sticky willy. This is wholly edible. You can eat it raw, but I would not recommend because it has these fine hairs on them. They're hooked and they attach to you. This thing could do a number on your throat, but it's wholly edible. However, I'd strongly recommend that you cook it before you eat it. Just avoid getting those barbed hairs stuck in your throat. Cooking will make it more palatable. This is an early dog violet. It's a violet, but unlike most violets, it doesn't have the typical violet scent. That's why they call it the dog violet. It's very, very, very small compared to my hand. Here you can see the cluster of three early dog violets. See, one, two, three. There's another one in the back, which is kind of wilted already. But that's how they typically grow in little clusters. And again, here's the wood sorrel. Colors are stunning, though I'm sure the camera can't capture the vibrancy just as well as it is in real life. The leaves. That's a great spotted woodpecker. He's not really a bringer of spring, he's been here year-round, all winter. But he just managed to land on the tree as I was preparing to film. So I got him in. You're in the video, buddy. Anyway, I'll unzoom. I'm right here at the edge of the forest. Because all this blue stuff is growing here. See, this is common periwinkle. It has this low growing habit, it doesn't grow very tall, but it's quite ground covering. Like, uh, there's a lot of blue on the ground. All of that is common periwinkle. Periwinkles have these almost star-shaped flowers. Leaves are very glossy. These are periwinkle leaves. It's a lot of gloss to them. And right beside here, this is wild strawberry. Not in bloom yet, but these are the leaves of wild strawberry. That's exactly what you think it is. This is a wood sorrel growing in the trunk of a tree. Now look at this one. What do you think of this one? Does this look like wood sorrel to you? Hint, it's not. Let me just step here for a sec. This is Butzerau. Eerily similar, but a whole different thing. What we looked at before, over there, I'll get closer in a second, that was wood anemone. Butzerau is this. It has these clover-like leaves, remember? Shamrock. Whereas wood anemone, let me get back. They have similar flowers, but the leaves look completely, completely different. Three lobes, and they're divided into two sections along midribs. Whereas wood sorrel, that's pure clover, heart-shaped. Wood anemone is not edible, but allegedly also has some medicinal properties. Some compounds apparently have been isolated and used in treatment of headaches or muscle pain. Anything that's got something to do with inflammation reduces inflammation apparently. But the dosage is tricky, so in my opinion, admire, but don't harvest or use. This wood anemone looks much better than the one I showed you before. And this is ground ivy. I've already made a video about those, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. They're already growing, they're blooming, forming flowers, but they're still very, very small. Tiny, as you can see. And of course, there's wild strawberries. The leaves of wild strawberries. But here... There's one blooming already. That's wild strawberry flower. This is gonna turn into a berry. It's one of the earliest berries to grow. 
very nutritious, very delicious. There's more of them blooming here. It's probably because this slope gets more sunlight. It's one of the earliest berries to grow in the year. Delicious, very nutritious, kind of small. So it takes a bit of work to harvest some amount, but really worth the effort. This is purple dead nettle. It's a milk family plant, much like ground ivy, which I've just shown you. Hence it has this square shaped stem. And like basically all mint family plants, it's wholly edible and highly medicinal. Purple dead nettles are the earliest dead nettles to grow, but they grow very small. You can see compared to my hand. They don't grow very large, but they're highly medicinal. Here's purple dead nettle growing right beside stingy nettle. The one on the left, purple dead nettle doesn't sting, hence dead nettle. The one on the right, stingy nettle, as the name suggests, stings. Both are highly medicinal, both are edible, but in my opinion nothing beats stingy nettles, the one on the right, in terms of nutrition and health benefits. Dead nettles just evolved to mimic stingy nettles as a defense mechanism, a self-preservation mechanism to ward off herbivores. We're early in the spring, but you can see the trees are already growing leaves. But overall, the canopy is not that thick yet. And before that canopy grows thick, you can oftentimes come across things like this in the forest. These are actually young beech tree shoots. In a beech forest, beech trees produce beech nuts. This is a shell from a beech nut. And there's usually a ton of them on the ground in a beech forest. See, I mean... But within those shells, there's nuts on here. These nuts are edible. Oh, this one's sprouting. What is drying out? Anyway, this is what, a, what an edible beech nut looks like. There's a few of them here. They grow within these shells in the fall and as they fall down some of them get into the ground and then sprout out looking like this. These want to be beech trees and they get going real strong in early spring but then as mature trees grow their leaves they cover up the sun and no sun gets to the ground so these don't really have much chance to grow into anything bigger but nevertheless they store a lot of energy in spring and those that get into the ground spring up and attempt to grow this is one of the speed wells but I'm not sure which one exactly I'm familiar with Persian speed well which is much paler uh, this one's one of the kind, but I'm not sure which one exactly. Obviously, I still have a lot to learn. Sorry about that, guys. Can't give you any more precise information about this one. I'm gonna find Persian Speedwell, and I'll show you that one instead. Okay, got it. The wind's picking up again. So this is Persian Speedwell. A tiny, very delicate, solitary plant. Prefers full sun exposure, but will tolerate partial shade as well. But because of that, you're more likely to find it on the side of the road, rather than in a forest. It's also quite drought tolerant. So last year, when we had the severe drought, it was one of the few plants that kept growing. It is said to have some medicinal properties, but with caveats, so I don't harvest it. That applies to all speed wells, including the deep purple one, which I showed you before. Spring vetch, as you can see, has this richly purple color. It's quite branched out too. The seeds are said to be poisonous, contain some kind of toxin, but I've seen little birds feeding on them. However, because it's toxic, it's just pretty to look at, but doesn't have much more value for a practical forager. 
Here's a much better view of Lesser Calendina I've shown you before. This one's open so you can see what the flower looks like. The leaves are like this, kind of heart shaped. There's a bunch of them here as well. There's another flower, but this one's not fully open. The leaves are very distinctive, can't really confuse for anything else. It's considered toxic for humans and livestock, but drying apparently neutralizes the toxicity. However, I wouldn't want to try. It's one of the first flowers to bloom after the snow melts. And it adds a nice contrast to the white of the snow. And this is oak moss. Not a flower and not tied to a spring, but who doesn't need a bonus in a video? This wood sorrel is nicely open. Now this one's somewhat different from all the others that I've featured so far. This one's Herb Paris. There's a few of them here. A bit larger one here. A couple smaller ones. They all have these four leaves growing in all four directions. And it's gonna keep growing up like this one. And eventually when it matures, it's gonna produce one single berry right among those leaves in the middle. It's black and colored. And it's extremely toxic. Basically every part of the plant is toxic. Leaves, stems, roots, and the berry. This one's probably the most toxic of all that I've featured so far. Herb Paris. That's one to get to know very well and admire, but do not consume. Do not consume this one, that's for sure. Apparently I lied. Some herb Paris plants form five leaves. One more here. The white stuff is just petals from the tree. Most of them form four. And the large one here. But apparently that's not the rule. Some have five. These petals are from a blooming tree somewhere up there. Sun's about to set. Been here all day, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Had all kinds of weather today. But before I go, here's the last flower I'll cover. This is field pansy. It's basically a type of violet, but looks like this, mostly white and yellow. It's a very delicate plant. It's edible and medicinal, known to possess cancer-fighting properties. Some herbalists use extracts made from this flower to treat skin conditions, eczema and that type of stuff. Very delicate little plant. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me on this little expedition to explore springtime flowers. And I'll see you in the next video.